Hey, what's up, Reefers? So about a year ago, I made the huge mistake of ordering 25 pounds of Bukani rocks for my 17-gallon drop-off tank. They're all supposed to fit in this 17-gallon tank, which is probably not gonna happen. So learning from that mistake, I scaled back. Now, I have a column built for the 45-gallon tank, but those are my leftover Bukani rocks. So I ordered another 15 pounds hoping to build a nice column. So last time in the special instruction, I asked for softball sized pieces of rocks and all of them came in softball size and those are perfect. Um, amazing shape, really light again, really porous, huge value for the money you spent, but really good bang for the bucks. So this time I did not hesitate. I went with Bikani Rock again at BRS. This is the rock I really recommend people going with. So I ordered 15 pounds. So let me show you what I got. Alright guys, so so far these are all pretty good, really good shape, all really porous, love the shape, but Ryan, what is this? What is this? What, what is this giant? Well, first of all, right here, this already feels like 15, 20 pounds of rock, and then I see this giant, I'm like, oh my god, what is this asteroid? Man, but I cannot complain because this looks fantastic, imagine this guy. Standing right here, this is a column by itself. I need to prop it up. So in this case, this is, uh, I'm really happy with the purchase, if you cannot tell. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what kind of softball you guys are playing, man, but I don't want to play with you guys. These are huge, you're gonna knock me out. But uh, the plan is to put some of these rocks into the 45 gallon tank, and then some of these other rocks are gonna go into another different surprise. All right, guys, as the inappropriate reefer, usually I do not cure my rocks. I usually just start a new tank, throw the rock in there, and just like let it cycle naturally. But since these rocks are going to uh, some established tanks, I figure I better play safe. I don't want to go for another cycle in the display tank. So I got this bin laying around. I mixed up some salt water, added a tiny power head. I wanted to use something a little bit larger, but this is what I have on hand, so I'm using this. I was debating whether I should use a heater or not, but since my house is pretty warm, I mean, I'm wearing a t-shirt around, around the house, so I figure it should be okay, especially since we're just curing uh, dry rocks. So I'm gonna let this mix, and I'm gonna let it sit for about five to six weeks. I think that's usually when the uh, phosphate hit like a low enough level that it can transfer the rocks into the display tank. And I added some uh, C-CAM stability to help kickstart the uh, quote-unquote curing or cycling process in this bin. So, Patience, right? Patience is a virtue. I feel like I'm becoming more and more appropriate <laughs> every single time. All right, guys, I guess I will see these guys again uh, in a couple weeks and check in with you guys then. Three days later. What's up, Reefers? So it's Thanksgiving morning, and what better way to kick off this long weekend than doing a deep cleaning on the 17-gallon drop-off tank. Now, I just turn on the light just so that I can see what I'm doing. So as you can see, everything's closed up, but you can see the detritus build up. So I decided to do a deep cleaning this morning and I already pulled a skimmer. And I wanna show you guys just what it looks like in there. Man, I have not cleaned this in months. Probably four months or so. So you can see there's like a bunch of detritus build up back there. Uh, that chamber is not as bad, that's the main chamber, but I got a bunch of uh, marine pure spheres tuck, tucked underneath. Uh, so basically, there's more space underneath here. It's kind of tucked in. So underneath it, I have a, another compartment where I shove a bunch of marine pure spheres in there. So my plan right now is to use my uh, trusty air hose to kind of siphon out as much as I can over here and in that compartment. And then I'm going to see if this fits. I think it will. Uh, put some like filter floss in here, uh, run some. Ultra Max. Uh, this looks like an all-in-one filter media. I actually won it in an Instagram contest. Uh, it provides a filter sock. So I'm gonna jam all this in here, put it right there, see if it fits, and then we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna run this, not long term, just for maybe a week or so to trap all the detritus and kind of pull out some of the phosphate. I'm gonna drop the skimmer back in and we'll see. In the meantime, I'm gonna mod the skimmer because the uh, high door nano skim is not that effective. Here, let me show you. So this is becoming my my aquarium. Hey, my aquarium uh, fish fishing bathroom sink. 
Uh, so I clean this guy out, but it's not too effective because uh, there are a lot of gaps that spits out micro bubbles. So there's a really popular mod that involves hot glue gun, which I do not have at the moment. So I'm gonna borrow it and I'm gonna seal up some of the seams. I think it's like seams like this, right? That lets bubble out. So a lot of people are saying that once they've done that modification, the skimmer becomes a lot more efficient. So I'm gonna give that a try since I'm gonna run the um, some mechanical filtration for a week or so. So that'll give me a week to kind of um, do the mod and drop this back in. So, oh, sidebar. Notice uh, I got two yellow tail blue damsel. That means that the, uh, the other yellow two butt blue damsel has been surviving. It's actually the second week. So for some, for some reason, Mochi is ignoring both of them, which is great. I would love to have more fish in this tank. All right, guys, I'm gonna get, get to work and hopefully there's no weird complication. Check in with you guys later. All right, so right now I'm about to siphon uh, the detritus trap in the green star polyp mat. As you can see there, all the gray spot or the brown spot, those are all detritus. Uh, it has really increased ever since I added the MP10 because the detritus used to collect down there a lot, but now that it's pretty much spotless because all the detritus got blown out and up here. And a lot of them get trapped in the GSP mats, which I like because I would rather collect it here versus in the back where it's a lot tougher to get to. And my habit was to vacuum the uh, GSP mat weekly, but recently I've been slacking. I think this is about two weeks worth. So you see, uh, I'll just show you. So I started to siphon on the, on the airline already. Uh, just, just to show you guys how strong this is. All right, so this is what I do. And it's, there's something s satisfying about just seeing this dirt just disappear as you go through them. Now the reason I like using airline versus like a huge siphon hose is that it's just easier to maneuver among the crevices. Especially I get a little, little space like that. You see all these things that comes up. You know, I get trapped in here. And of course if I if I don't get these out, eventually it's gonna break down into nitrate. And I suspect that that is why I'm having some uh, algae issue because all these crap that get trapped up and a nutrient that get just released over time. And along the edges, things where I can't see, you see all those things coming up. Yeah, just a lot of crap here. But again, I'm, I'm actually really happy. This is kind of, to me, it's kind of like a side benefit of having a green star pile up mat is to trapping all the detritus versus them flying everywhere. But sometimes, you know, I do get some larger pieces where I got to break up. And good, another good thing is that this essentially forces me to do a water change. Uh, whenever I siphon out detritus, I will turn off the all the top off system. And then, oh man, look at the, oh yeah, feels nice. All right guys, so I just prepped the media basket. So basically I got the floss up top and then I got a bag of those Aquamax uh, all-in-one media. It looks like carbon and GFO. I'm not sure if there's anything else in there. I see some like uh, white small dots that looks almost like sand, but I'm not sure what it is. But obviously there's a uh, black and brown, so I'm sure there's like uh, some carbon and GFO. So it's like a, it looks like a mix. And I rinse it out a little bit. I don't want to rinse it too much or grind it up too much because I know uh, the GFO is going to get crushed by the carbon. Uh, so drop this in and let's see how it looks. First problem, as you notice. There's a tiny gap there, so the basket is not sitting flush against the uh, acrylic pan back panel. So the water is kind of, I thought it was going to squirt out, but it actually goes down really, pretty much like right up against the wall. So it is completely bypassing the uh, media filter. So I need to either build something that kind of um, direct the water through the basket, or I'm going to try flipping it first because this portion sticks out and it touches the acrylic wall. Even though it's not flat, probably because the back is bowing out a little bit for the acrylic. Um, I'm gonna flip it first so at least we can direct, hopefully direct some of the flow into the filter. So let me try that. Moments later. As the kids would say these days, that was the move. Uh, so that totally solved the issue. All the water seems to be streaming through that little plate and it's going through the filter floss right now. And I kind of pushed the media up against that side as well. Now this media basket, uh, what company was it? Let me see. So this came with that. Uh, I actually got this uh, free from another uh, WAMAS member. He was giving it away, I believe it's Scott. Thank you so much. 
Uh, I think this may be a frag plug holder. I'm not sure, but this came with that as well, and I assume that's the same brand uh, in tank. So yeah, it seems to be working really well. I'm really happy with it. It was a tight squeeze to squeeze that uh, magnetic mount of the nano power head up here, but then uh, I was able to manage. So this is this is perfect. I love this. Thank you again. Thank you so much. He was giving it away for free on the forum. And uh, I'm lucky enough to pick it up. And it seems to be a perfect fit for the 17 gallon drop off, uh, for the acrylic. Uh, so I'm gonna leave this running for probably a week, uh, maybe a little bit less, depending on how fast the floss runs out. I may I may to replace at least one of the one layer of the floss. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna mod up the uh, skimmer. And once the skimmer is modded, I'm gonna pull this out and put the skimmer back in. Or if this is running really well, I may just keep this in here long term like this kind of setup and just rely more on like mechanical filtration with like uh, some kind of like phosphate absor absorber, uh, right? absorber, I can't speak. Uh, basically that I believe is like a carbon and uh, GFO mix. Uh, so I, I do have those for, for my media reactor leftovers. So I can always replace that. In fact, I have so much that, and there's two chambers, right? I could probably do one chamber with uh, carbon and then one chamber of GFO. Um, and that Alcromax uh, container that came with uh, two really convenient mash bag ready. So I could definitely reuse those. So we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna leave this running for a bit. I'm gonna pick up that uh, Monty, <laughs> the Monty Cat frag and probably epoxy. It was kind of just tucked in there, but I guess uh, the current was a little bit too fast. So I'm gonna epoxy it over there permanently because it was looking good and it was growing well. And I just noticed how dirty the MP10 pre-filter is. I probably need to clean that up as well. So I'm gonna do this. Basically today is all about the 17 gallon drop off tank uh, clean up in terms of like aquariums. After I'm done with this, I'm gonna relax and then just hang out with the family. So talk to you guys later. Two hours later. Hey, what's up Reefers? This is gonna be kind of an interesting update because I'm gonna talk about my freshwater tank real quick. So right here, we got my tiny five gallon Goshen feeder tank. As, as you can see, I actually added two guppies in there and I actually have uh, quite a few funny stories about this guys. So first of all, we still got some Goshrimps going on and I kind of replenish the tank every two to three weeks to add some new Goshrimp. And there's a Paleco somewhere up there he is. It's actually grown quite a bit right there. But onto these guppies. So I was trying to figure some fish to add to this tank. I had two huge black mollies before, uh, thinking that I'll try to uh, have them breed and um, feed the babies to mochi. That sounds terrible, I know. Uh, but it's not happening. And then these guys are huge, they just look really crowded. It just doesn't, it's not a good feeling. So I gave them away from my local fish store and I've been trying to figure out what other fish I can add in here comfortably. And finally, I saw this guy right here. See this red guy? So this is a Dumbo guppy. The reason it's called Dumbo is because the uh, pectoral fins, they are large and they are black. And because of that, this guy is uh, $19. Pretty crazy for guppies, but I know they can cost a lot. While there, I want to find a female for this guy. Now, keep in mind, I know nothing about freshwater fish. I mean, I kept fresh freshwater fish before, but it's all kind of like hit or miss, right? Back then when I was a kid. So going, in my, going with the quote unquote knowledge that all the female looks kind of dull, I went to the Sunset Tequila uh, Guppy Tank and I picked this guy. I was like, okay, this guy looks kind of dull, you know, they have like some crazy looking ones. So this guy looks kind of dull, so I figured it's female because he got a big stomach as well. So I picked these two fish up and I took a picture as I was walking out the store and I posted it on my Instagram. When I got home, after I acclimated added the fish in, I checked my Instagram, man, Everybody and the grandma are telling me that, yo, they look great, but you got two males. So I got two dudes right now, I had no idea. Uh, so I did a quick reading up and they were schooling me. They're like, oh, for female, this is how you ID it. Look at the fins, you know, and then look, look for eggs and stuff like that. So I'm like, all right, fine, fine. So I got two males right now. Uh, so this happened about two, two and a half weeks ago. So these guys have been living in here, uh, having a blast. It's like a bachelor's plat. So for the last week, I have been kind of like visiting my local fish store trying to find some suitable females because ultimately I want them to breed and I think that I'm going to try feeding some of the uh, newborn babies to Mochi. I know, kind of cruel I know, but circle of life. Well, here comes the problem. From my reading, I, 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 uh, I learned that like, uh, I look at the anal fin or whatever fin is down there to identify male and female. And then I learned that the female just looks not as great as a male. Armed with that knowledge, I went to a local chain pet store and I, I in, in one of the tanks, right? 
clearly they both say like female guppies. I saw a couple really beautiful looking ones. Like the, the, uh, the fins are really small. It is really colorful and the inner fin is, has a triangle shape. It's not like collapsed. So I was like, okay, they gotta be female. Especially since I saw what looks like eggs in the stomach. So I talked to employee, I was like, hey man, I'm trying to find some female guppies. I think these are it. Can you help me bag them up? But here's where it kind of got strange. He was like, yo, you know what? I mean, I know you're looking for female, but these are, these are, I'm sure these are male. So I'm like, what? <laughs> so he's like, yeah, these are male. I mean, just look at the body shape, look at the color. Sometimes yes, the fin, but it's not always 100% correct. I just want to make sure you get what you're paying for. I'm like, fuck, I'm like second guessing myself. So I'm like, all right, fine, you know what? You might have to take a picture, I'll ask my friends, I'll come back in the, in the future if, like, to get it. If my friends feels like it's like safe, uh, good bet. Um, and it's like, yeah, yeah, man, just go for it, do your thing. I was like, all right, cool. So I took a picture, I posted it on my Instagram at Inappropriate Reefer, be sure to follow me if you have not. <laughs> and I, I, w I went ahead, went to other stores to run my errands. So by the time I got done, uh, I sat down, I looked at my phone, I checked the comment, everybody said, yep, those are females. So I'm like, cool, because those females look beautiful, I would love them. So I went back to the chain store, I went in, I looked in the tank and they are gone. So in the span of about like two, three hours, somebody came in and just bought them out. I'm like, man, just not meant to be. So unfortunately, these two guys right here, uh, they just gotta keep each other company. I mean, they're just like hanging out. I mean, they're having fun, you know? They're not bothering each other. They're hanging out. They're staying close to each other. So it was cool. Uh, so from during these couple days, I did some research. It, lo it looks like uh, the perfect number is basically one male to two or three female. So that means um, at a minimum, I need to add four females. Now the number game kind of changes a little bit once I hit like 10 fish, then it's all good. But I'm not gonna keep 10 fish here. It's, this tank is way too small. Uh, so my plan is to add three or four females, probably four females, depending on their size. But yeah, I'm starting from zero when it comes to freshwater fish. So there's a whole whole new world, which is really fun for me, actually. You know what? Because like, granted, there's a lot of things I still got to learn about marine tank, but this is just I'm like starting out as a noob, which is refreshing. You know, this is this is kind of cool. I know nothing about plants. I'm learning about substrate. I'm learning about fish, how to sex them, blah, blah, blah. And right here, uh, so over this tank, I got a uh, really cheap, I think this is like 15 bucks, uh, Amazon light. Supposedly you can grow a plant, but the plant is barely surviving. It's not thriving. So I went over to Sally's because she she's traveling. I stole something from her house. I stole her uh, Castle 880. <laughs> <laughs> I stole her Castle A80 to, be, to use on a tiny planted tank. Uh, so this guy, the spectrum may not be completely correct. Uh, I, I know this is a tuna blue version, so this is white and blue, right? Versus planted, you want like white and yellow light, more, more towards the 64K. So this is more towards like 18K or even 20K. But I know I can dial the color all the way to the white. Uh, but I feel, I feel like at this point, anything will be more powerful than this little light right there. So I'm gonna step that light on. Uh, I noticed I may be an issue because the filter is right here. I'm not sure if there's enough space, but we'll figure it out. But guys, I'm just out here having fun, becoming an ac aquarist, right? Inappropriate reefer, inappropriate aquarist? I don't know. Well, I'm gonna go have fun. I don't always clean my tank, but when I do, I do a pretty, I was gonna say a pretty good job, but I see Detroit is collecting already, damn it.